So Cal, we met at a meetup. We had an interesting conversation about uh, data syncing, which is actually a really passionate uh, subject of mine over the last few years. But you have an interesting background in data. Yeah, I was. I also have a surprising interest in data syncing. And when you gave that presentation, I was really excited because I'm always looking for data challenges to solve. My first product that I created was called SQL Pipe, and that's also the name of my company. And that's a simple batch data movement tool, but eventually I found that people were using it to do database migrations, and that requires some live data syncing if you want to you know, move a database with no downtime. So I started to get familiar with streaming data changes and checking for duplicates between two data systems. Now, that's actually a relatively easy problem if you're going from you know, a nice clean relational database to another nice clean relational database. And I was really interested in the challenge that you and Stripe customers are trying to solve, which is syncing data from different systems with almost you know, different data models, such as a REST API and a relational database. So why is syncing Stripe data just harder than it looks when you're trying to sync it with your own system? Like what's, what's the nut of the problem there? Well, I actually have a slide that you might find a little bit familiar. <laughs> You've probably seen that before. And, you know, first of all, you just have to learn and use many systems. So this is the current best practice recommended by you and the team at Stripe to sync between a database and your Stripe account. And I count six different systems in here, some of which need to contain custom code. So, you know, there's two queues, an event bridge rule, a SAS event bus, and then two custom Lambda functions. So just right off the bat, you have to learn and use six different systems. And another challenge that Stripe is very helpful with is checking for duplicates. Because what happens, I don't have to tell you, but just for the video, if you make a change in your database, it'll be replicated to Stripe through these systems, but then Stripe will report a change. So it will send a change back through the other side and make its way to the database. Well, now the database is gonna report a change again, and you end up with the adorably named dog chasing its tail problem. Mm -hmm. And Stripe has this thing called an item potency key in their API, but not every system has that. So if you want to sync with Stripe and your database and something else, which we'll eventually get to, it becomes a challenge. And the last thing is there are differences in names between fields. So for example, Stripe calls the price of something unit amount. So unless you had the unbelievable foresight to call your price of your product unit amount in your database, then you're going to have to remember that and account for that forever in multiple places, wherever you're doing that transformation. So just going back a little bit to SQL Pipe, you're the founder of this, but for those who are not familiar with what it is, give us a bit of a background about what you've built and what sort of problems it solves. Yeah, SQL Pipe, it was actually an idea that I had while I was working full time as a data engineer in the States. I'm originally from Boston. And I kept running into the same problem that these companies were doing large batch ETL jobs every night, basically entirely refreshing their data warehouse with a select star from, from their database. So maybe they were going from Postgres to something else, such as Snowflake or Redshift, and I had to get from this system to that system. And there just wasn't anything that seemed to do a very good job at it, at least not small, efficient, kind of like the Unix uh, philosophy of a small tool that does one thing well. So I actually taught myself to use Go to create a very fast and efficient batch data pipeline tool. So that's SQL Pipe. And it's actually gotten a good amount of traction. It's used at Fortune 500 companies. I get thousands of website visitors every month. Um, yeah, so it's, it's paid for uh, you know, developing other tools and has supported me for a few years. So mm. it's really special to me. Yeah, from my background, I can understand the value of that. I've seen this problem in pretty much every role I've ever had. Now, Remix is something new, of course. So, so tell us about that. Well, Remix started when I watched your presentation at Stripe London. I thought, okay, I've built similar functionality before in things that built on top of SQL Pipe, the most notable of which is called Albatross. And Albatross never really took off the way I wanted it to but I learned how to replicate data between two systems and check that they're in sync while I was doing that. And so I built that on top of SQL Pipe. But as I was building Remix, it just kept getting further and further away from the original code base. 
that eventually I was just like, you know what, I'm going to copy everything to a new repository and just delete all of the old SQL pipe code because it's so different. And the reason it's so different is that batch data movement is so different from streaming. So actually, let's touch on that a little bit. So, you know, ETL is very popular in this space. How would you say that it, your approach differs from that traditional ETL approach? Well, traditional ETL is exactly what I described. Probably the most common thing still to this day, even though there's a ton of tools that have tried to solve this problem, is you're a big company with a bunch of databases and you just select star from your tables every night and dump them into some centralized place where hopefully you can make sense of it. So they've actually stopped calling it ETL and a lot of tools now call themselves ELT. So instead of extract transform load, they're now extract load transform. And really great examples of this would be Fivetran or Airbyte. You know, there's a ton of tools that are really well done. It's a, it's a well covered space at this point. But the streaming side of things I found is usually a lot more bespoke. There isn't really, I mean, there are data streaming platforms out there, but I find that a lot of companies just default to using Kafka and building their own gigantic list of topics. And if people aren't familiar, Kafka is basically a way to transmit messages between a bunch of different systems. So it's just a completely different paradigm where instead of moving a bunch of data all at once overnight or something like that, you're constantly keeping your data refreshed throughout various systems. But that creates a lot of new challenges itself. Yeah. Very briefly, how would you describe what an integration looks like between Remix and Stripe? Well, you need another tool as well because you need to sync it with something. And the thing that makes Remix, I think the first feature and benefit of it is that instead of six tools, it's just one. So here you have to expose some external API endpoint. You have to have all of this logic, whereas Remix is just one tool that you can run in Kubernetes and there is no imperative logic. You uh, configure it with declarative JSON and YAML files. And a nice trick that I like is I included in the Docker file the Stripe CLI with the webhook listener. So you actually don't even have to configure an external endpoint to send the webhooks to, which I'm sure we'll talk about. So it's truly just, hey, bring this thing into your environment, write a few JSON and YAML files, and watch it go. So in a really concrete example, like if you were trying to sync something like customer balances or invoice data, what does that look like? First, you have to define canonical data models. Mm -hmm. And I have a slide for this. Have you heard of JSON schema? Indeed. So JSON schema, for people who don't know, is probably the most popular and well-supported way to define data models. And anyone who does enterprise data anything knows that the hardest thing is getting everyone to agree and move forward with one thing. So it's important to choose a standard that everyone's own tools and programming languages can somehow speak with. So JSON schema, which let's say you're syncing product data. That's the example I'm prepared to talk about. You can see here that we have a title called product and we have four fields. We have an ID, we have a Stripe ID, which could be the string coming in from the Stripe API, a name and a price, not unit amount, price. And basically what we're telling everyone is that this is our business's idea of what a product record should look like. And the challenge arises when you use a tool like Stripe, which models the data in a different way. So I'm sure you know, but here's what a Stripe, here's how Stripe models a product and a price. They're actually modeled separately. So here we have a price and we could have a default price ID um, in the product, and then we have a price. And Stripe needs to do this because their customers need to sell things in different countries with different prices, with different currencies, et cetera. But that becomes really challenging for some company that didn't have the foresight to uh, separate their products and their prices into separate tables. And a lot of the time, they'll just have some legacy IT system where it's not really feasible to change the entire architecture of the system like that. So that's, what, that's the challenge, really, that Remix shines at. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I think this is a fascinating problem, and I, I did the talk originally, is that really it's a problem at scale. You see it in big companies and systems where there's lots of moving data that changes a lot. Yeah. You don't tend to see it so much in, in small places. But what are your thoughts around 
you know, reliability, reliability and item potency when you get into this scale type of system? Well, that's the whole game, isn't it? You can, pretty much anyone can make a system that transmits data from point A to point B along a happy path. But can you do it at scale, reliably? Does it account for server faults, et cetera? And that's actually something that I need to work on when it comes to Remix. I have a ton of ideas about that. I would like to separate the queue from running on the disk of the Remix server to maybe something like Redis that can be run just in a managed service on Amazon. Or maybe I support many different queues. So maybe your company is comfortable with Rabbit, so you just use Rabbit instead of Redis. And I actually purposefully designed the internal storage system of Remix to be very easy to implement in other systems. It's just an array and a map. That's all it is. So how does it work well with internal systems that might, may vary from Postgres to BigQuery to internal APIs and other yeah. things? This is something I learned about when I was building SQL Pipe. You generally want to have a fan-in, fan-out approach. So that actually gets to the core of how Remix works, where Go has great integrations with tons of data systems. So you know, there's a great Postgres driver, there's a great MySQL driver, there's a great SQL Server driver, but they all report and return data in slightly different formats. So you have to write custom code to standardize the data that's coming in from each one of those drivers. And then what you do is you marshal that data into the shape of one of the canonical data models that you've defined. So for example, maybe a Postgres database is reporting uh, some data. You need to get it into a shape and field names that look like this with the proper types. So that's the key there to uh, scaling your integrations is just finding good drivers and then normalizing the data that comes in from. Now you're looking for developers to try using Remix. So what sort of people are you looking for to give this a test drive? Well, I'm kind of thinking of Remix as a batteries included Kafka. So if you wanted to set up some internal data streaming solution, you know, you'd have to find people who know Kafka, who know Kafka Connect to connect to everything. They might have to set up Debezium to get change data capture records. They'll have to write custom transform code to send data to and from Stripe. And I'm looking for people who just want to get the job done. So let's say you're some fast growing AI startup and you're finding that you have to sell your product in a bunch of different countries, in a bunch of different currencies, and you don't want to keep that data up to date in multiple places. This would be ideal for you to sync your internal application with all of your pricing and, you know, product data that needs to live in Stripe. So that's who I'm looking for. If you already have Kafka, if you're already familiar with something like Debezium and writing, you know, custom topics, then this still can be useful to you, but you might just want to use the tool that you're comfortable with already. Now, casting our minds way ahead to what the future looks like, what do you think are some of the changes and the evolutions in the future integrations with SaaS providers and Stripe? And how do you think that Remix in the future will fit into some of that? I think the future that we're moving towards is systems that interchange canonical data models. That's really the ideal, where your business has some holistic view of what an object looks like. For example, the product object. And even if every single field isn't contained in every single system, it would still be great to look at each one of those systems and see that the same data is there and understand how you could put together a canonical product object if you needed to. So that's really helpful with reporting. I mean, just having a holistic view of your data is useful for literally every single part of a business's operations these days, especially more advanced ones. So that's where I see it going is defining canonical data models and having systems that enforce those models. Well, Cal, this is just a fascinating space. I'm really glad you've come in to talk to us about this. It's just a huge topic to take apart. It is. But next, we're going to have Cal to give us a demo of, of Remix. But if you want to take a look yourself, go to sqlpipe.com forward slash products forward slash Remix. Mm -hmm.